After decades playing metal music, this guitarist knows the ups and downs of the industry. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're speaking with Glenn Drover about his career and why he finally decided to go solo. So we always like to start with kind of the origin stories of the people that we interview. So give us an idea how you came to follow music as your path. I was very young, probably, I don't know, six or seven was when I first started to get into, you know, Kiss and bands like that, Sabbath, and um, that was the beginnings. That was where the, you know, the seed was planted. And uh, shortly after, my brother, our, uh, Sean, who's in Megadeth, you know, um, he started playing drums. I started playing guitar and we just kind of started to, you know, improve on, on, on our instrument, and uh, that's how it started. Now you've mentioned a couple, but tell us about some of your main, your seminal influences as a kid. Probably Tony Iommi from Sabbath was a big one. Ace Freely would probably be the first, uh, but, but Tony, was when things were brought to the next level. That's when I first started to play along with my records and learn simple bar chords, uh, piecing solos together, you know, and all this kind of thing. Just, just basically putting all these different elements together of guitar playing in, in metal, raw, hard rock. You've uh, been through a lot of bands through your career. How would you say this affects the creative process, negatively or positively? No, it's not negative. Um, you know, it, I think in a way it's kind of healthy when you when you try different types of situations. For example, King Diamond was my first pro gig, and that was great for the time I was in the band for those years, um, and I definitely learned a lot from them. But when I got to Megadeth, it was a whole new learning experience, going to the next level. You know, there's a lot of things that you learn what not to do, what what to do, what not to do. So tell us what finally led to the decision of you making a solo record. When I left Megadeth, I, I think I kind of had it in, in my in my head for a little while to try to do um, a more of a fusion kind of rock project, but trying to find the right musicians. When I left Megadeth, I was fortunate enough to find some guys that were friends of mine that I could work with and who understand it, or, or can understand where I was coming from. It just worked out, you know, it was just one of those things. It just you could get into a group of musicians to, to jam and, and it's either going to work or not. And in this kind of situation, it worked out beautifully. You also teach a lot of guitar players and that must keep your chops up. Uh, what else do you do to kind of practice? Like I've always done, I just I'll put on an album that inspires me and just play along. Not necessarily playing what's on the record, but just playing along and just uh, keeping your chops up that way. What's your number one record to put on and jam to? Probably Tony McAlpine, um, Evolution. Great record. It's got a lot of real good feel to it. Um, so it's really easy to kind of just, you know, embrace all those different things of melody and, and concentrating on your vibrato and your bends, um, you know, and the technical ability to do the more flashy stuff, you know. Well, awesome. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. No